Hi guys. So I was, uh, you know, requested to just give an overview of the energy screen and I might actually do a few other things with this too, but just to give you a rundown of how it works and what features are available. Um, I just wanted to walk through them. You know, the first is the, uh, flow screen. I don't really use this one very often. This is something that maybe you would use if, uh, you have kids in the car or something and they want to watch as you're driving can keep people entertained but um, I rarely if ever use it it was more important I think for the volt than the Bolt EV because the volt at least it would tell you whether you were um, engaging the internal combustion engine and generator uh, whereas with the Bolt um, EV it's just pretty straightforward you either have power coming in or power going out uh, this is where I, one of my criticisms for GM is if you're gonna have this screen add some data um, I want to know amperage. I want to know volts. Um, I want to know kilowatts. I'd like to see a lot more data on this screen, uh, maybe kilowatt hours left in the battery or at least estimated. Uh, so if you're, if you're going to put a screen like this up there, GM, if you're listening, give us more data. Um, all right. And then, you know, this you just click back. It's pretty intuitive. Uh, the charging now, uh, you have, uh, a few different options. Uh, with the with the 120 volt um, charging, you can actually change the amperage, uh, but it's going to give you a warning just so you know you you don't overload your circuit. And uh, you know, so 12 amps, it, it's going to to take about 52 to 54 hours to recharge a Bolt EV from nothing. Uh, eight hours, I think it'll take something like 70 hours. It's it's a, it's much longer. Uh, one thing I noticed, though, um, and and I'll, I'll verify this, but it looks like because I had switched it over before, um, I think it saves the switch, unlike it did like in the in the volt, the volt will automatically default back to eight amps every single time where it seems like the Bolt EV does not. You can also do other things, too, where, um, you know, you have the timing and uh, you can control all of that. So. Uh, if you if you go to this, you notice it also opens up more options on the bottom in terms of uh, your electric rate preference and things of that nature. So you can set it to do a departure. And if you do this, um, you, you can go through and edit and you can set the times for uh, for when you want, you know, when you're planning to depart. Uh, so it'll it'll kick on the energy and make sure that you're full by the time you depart. Or, or whatever you want it to be. Um, now this I would leave, I would leave on just because how often are you going to plug in and not want a minimum of about a hundred miles of range? You're, you're going to want that 40% on all the time. Just be, you, whenever you plug in, if you're that low, might as well. Uh, and you can go into your, um, actually, so you're back and you can, you can actually right now notice I, I, I don't, I usually use just use public charging or work charging. So the charging rate doesn't really matter to me, but you can go in here and select. So the edit isn't live until you select. So say you want, uh, you know, off peak only, and then this will, um, you know, select the most, uh, I guess, efficient or uh, the, the cheapest um, times to refill your battery. Um, and you can you can customize it and again you can go to edit your preferences and this this goes to like the departure schedule you, you know you can make make your uh, um you know your charge completion to be the earliest it can possibly complete or or the latest it can it can possibly complete All right and then uh and i i don't use this so like i said for me i'm just gonna switch it back over but you can also do a temporary override um, so say you, uh, you know, you want to, uh, temporarily override your settings, say, say you normally do the off peak charging at home, but you're on a road trip or a vacation or whatever you can say, oh, well, the temporary override, I'm going to, you know, set to, um, you know, the temporary de uh, departure. I don't know why this is not engaging. Let's see. That is odd. Okay, well, that's a little quirk. So, anyway, so it looks like um, you you have to to toggle around with that. Interesting. Um, 
So now you can do immediate. Yeah. All right. But anyway, um, yes. And I do want to cancel this because like I said, for me, my default setting is always going to be, um, is my, I don't, I don't know if that's a quirk with the interface, but mine is always going to just be to immediate. And then, uh, for the information, this just gives you a breakdown of how you used your energy and you can look through different charts of it too. Uh, where, where your inefficiencies were, where your efficiencies were, um, you know, and you can check what your efficiency history is and, you know, and you can reset it too. Um, I just leave it on this just because it gets a easy breakdown. And then uh, energy settings, you, you have another few options. The Hilltop Reserve is uh, is new, and this is this is if you live on top of a mountain, and you uh, you know you can turn it on or you can turn it off. And because what happens is, when you start um, at a higher elevation, you're going to start regenerating power just driving down. And and one thing I can tell you just through my experiences so far driving this car is you will notice the difference in regenerative braking power between a um, full charge and a, you know, a depleted battery. Because uh, I drive in low, and so what will happen is it'll bring the entire car to a stop just based on regenerative braking. And um, if you're only regeneratively braking at, like, say, 15 to 20 kilowatts max, it doesn't slow the car down as fast as you would be used to if, say, you were driving around at like 80 or 60 or 40 percent state of charge. So just something to keep in mind. Um, and you you have the the other settings are pretty common, whether or not you uh, um, you, you know you want your co uh, charge cord theft or some of these are really annoying, so I don't leave them on. Like the radio power, I I just turn to off when it's off, but uh. But for like the ch the charge power loss alert, charge cord theft alert, this might be important for some of you. But for me, I just typically leave these off. So that's just my quick overview of the energy screen. Um, and I'll post up some other stuff because I have some questions. You know, someone asked a question about whether or not you can set it to 80% state of charge maximum just so you don't, uh, so you, don't uh, you know, wear the battery excessively. And I think there's a way to do that, but, um, but that's for another video. So, all right. Thanks guys.